street in the middle of the view as well. So A Johannesburg skyline like this one is a sight Anthony Philbrick rarely sees from his clients' homes. The owner wants to convert her pool into a pond. So you would actually have rock underwater here. Keeping the swimming pool water clean involves a lot of work and it harms the environment. We still keep the existing system. I really would like to convert my pool um, into a natural wetland area because I'm using way too much chemicals every day. The water quality is not great. It feels not nice on the skin when you get out of the pool. Animals don't like the heavily chlorinated water either. Philbrick transforms pools like this one into a natural wildlife habitat. The architect was inspired by the swimming ponds popular in Austria in the 1980s. He took the idea to South Africa. Johannesburg has such good weather that one in three houses has a swimming pool. Uh, so if you look at an aerial photograph, the whole city is littered with them. There are 100,000 of them in the whole city. These conventional swimming pools are ecological deserts. They are full of toxins and really quite unpleasant. This pool is set to become an oasis, badly needed by the local wildlife. Water is scarce here. The South African winters are especially dry. Sometimes fire warnings have to be issued. The animals are struggling to survive. They can't find water anywhere. Plants play a key role in renaturing the pools. Anthony Philbrick has been working with this nursery for years. He's always on the lookout for new native species. The architect wants to use and preserve South Africa's rich biodiversity. When he began realizing his vision back in 2007, there were only 15 water plant species available to him. Thanks to his demand, the selection has more than doubled. The growers are all, are, are all people who are mad about plants, so you tell them, go and find some more plants to grow for us, They'll, they go out and they come up with all of these wonderful and wild species for us. It's been fantastic. That's how the architect found this particular plant. The water starlet's blossoms glow like stars in the night sky against the green background. These plants are fairly rare. They're from Namaqualand. They're really beautiful. Uh, and their, their environment is slowly shrinking. The Western Cape, as we know, the, it's getting less and less rain. Uh, and these are, these are swamp plants from an area which is fast drying up. Endangered species find a safe haven in the wetland pools. That improves their chance of survival. These plants are destined for the pond of a longtime customer. He's created a watery paradise and natural landscape in his own backyard, ideal for swimming and home to local wildlife. It used to be a dried out lawn. The swimming ponds bring nature back to life and they create new jobs. This water landscape functions like a natural purification facility. A wetland was created alongside the actual swimming pool. It contains plants that clean the rainwater. From here, the water is pumped into the pool. In order to clean this, the, the only way we could do it is have this biological filter, as I see it. It's a, the plants, as they grow, they take in nutrients out the water. As long as that's happening, you don't have algae growth. A couple of kilometers away, Natalia Dinat also had her swimming pool reconstructed. It used to be a normal rectangular basin. The new natural pool has brought about many changes. The pool really did bring us closer to nature. Um, it's brought a lot of consciousness to not only my family, but my friends as well, because everybody's interested in what kind of pool this is and how is it so clean. Water from the pool tastes better than tap water. The owner likes it, and so do all the animals.